Hey guys, I am Zach, and this is my early fall slash September book haul. So, I have 19 books to show you, most of which I got in September, but there's one that I got today, and today is October 2nd. Just so you know, when I'm filming it, it's October 2nd. <laughs> and... Yeah, let's just kind of get right into it. So, the first book I have was my most anticipated book for this year, and that is Quest for Glory, book four in the School for Good and Evil series by Salman Shanani. And this lived up to the very high expectations that I personally had for this book. I will talk more about it in my September wrap-up tomorrow, but it was, uh, it was everything. <laughs> Then, today, I got a package in the mail, and I thought it was going to be a book that I was waiting for for a blog tour, but no, it was a book that I've already pre-ordered, but it wasn't my pre-order, it was from the publisher, and while I am very thankful to the publisher for this book, my pre-order has already shipped, so there's no way I can... Uh, get all of my money back for it. But again, not a huge deal. I'll probably just do a giveaway or something. And that is Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan. This is the third and final book in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series. And I am so excited for this. I'm literally going to start reading this right after this video ends. And I can't wait to see how this trilogy comes to a conclusion. Then, for October, I wanted a, another really scary book, and so I picked up The Merciless 2 by Daniel Vega. This is the second book, obviously, in the Merciless series, which is about a girl named Sofia Flores, who is sort of coerced into being a participant in an exorcism. It's like Mean Girls meets The Exorcist, I'm not even kidding, and it is fantastic. This is the second book in the series. I can't really divulge what this is about without spoiling the first book, but one of the things I really, really loved about the first book was that you didn't really know if there was a need for an exorcism or not. Like, you didn't know if demons even exist in this universe, and so it was, it was a really great psychological horror type book. And I cannot wait to continue this series. The next book I have I received from Entangled Teen. So a huge thank you to Entangled Teen for sending me this book. And that is 27 Hours by Tristina Wright. This, all I know about it is that it's LGBT. I think there may be some asexual representation. And it's a sci-fi book. That's pretty much all I know. And the cover is so pretty. Like the foil teal... Uh, title and everything, ugh, it just, it looks so pretty, and it's purple, and I love purple, so huge thank you to Entangled Teen for this book, because, ugh, it's so pretty. So, next, I won a Goodreads giveaway, and I was so excited. I've only won two Goodreads giveaways in my entire life. One was for a book that I entered to win for my mom, and the other was a book that I had entered to win when I was kind of just going through all of the Goodreads giveaways when I first, like, discovered Goodreads and pretty much entered anything that even sounded remotely interesting, and I haven't read either of those books. But this one I was very highly anticipating, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I don't know too much about this because I don't really want to know too much going into it. I do know that there is, as the title suggests, a cruel prince. It's about fairies, and I believe it's about a girl who was, like, a changeling. So, I'm just, I'm excited to get to this one. And I will probably be doing a giveaway for this one. Um, actually, I know I'm going to be doing a giveaway for this one when I hit 250 subscribers. If I hit that before November, I will start it 
um, on November 1st. Otherwise, I will just start the giveaway whenever I hit 250 subscribers. So, because I, I, need, I need a chance to read the book myself. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for this book. Next, I kind of broke my book buying restriction, which is I can't buy the next book in the series if I haven't read the previous one. But I plan on reading both this book and the first book in the series this month. So I got One Dark Throne by Kendar Blake. It is a signed first edition. And this is the sequel to Three Dark Crowns, which is about three triplets who are all princesses of this kingdom. And in this kingdom, it's tradition that the triplets born each generation uh, have each have a different power. One's like a naturalist, one's a poisoner, and one's an elementalist. And so they have to fight to the death, and whoever wins gets to be queen. And so I'm assuming that this uh, kind of gets to the point of the last woman standing, and I'm excited to read this series. It, so it sounds like a great fantasy series. I've heard nothing but amazing things, and I've, he I've only heard that this book is better than the first. Then I picked up a book that I've been meaning to get for a long time now and I don't know when I'm gonna get around to reading it but I'm gonna try to pencil it in whenever as soon as I can and that is Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. This is a book where the Library of Alexandria never burned down. That's literally all I know about this book. Uh, it's the first book in the Great Library series and the spine looks amazing. The cover is amazing. I just, I don't know what this book is about other than that, but I'm interested in finding out. Then from Tor Books, I was supposed to get this book last month, but it never arrived, so they were nice enough to send me another copy, and that is the Al An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock, and this is the first book in a fantasy steampunk series. I don't know too much about it other than there are are masks and alchemy and musketeers and a princess or I think a queen I think she might be a queen yeah no she's a princess actually but yeah it sounds like a fantastic adult fantasy book I'm gonna try to get around to this in November I couldn't pencil it in for October unfortunately but I will get to it as soon as I can. <laughs> Next, I picked up Warcross by Marie Lu. This is about a young girl who hacks into this virtual reality gaming competition called Warcross, and she gets caught, and instead of being arrested for this, the uh, rich young designer of the game gives her a chance to be a spy within the game, and that just sounds amazing. I've heard that it being compared to Ready Player One, which I personally haven't read, but have heard nothing but amazing things about, and everybody I know who has read this book loves it. So I'm going to try to get to this also in November, whether or not I end up doing that. I don't Next, uh, Michael Oaken sent me his book Monsterland, which I think I already have this book, but it was published under a different name. I believe it's the same person, but just a different name. I believe it was Michael Philip Cash. And honestly, I preferred the old cover to this one. This is kind of like Jurassic Park, but with horror movie monsters. And I meant to read this, I believe, last Halloween, or maybe the Halloween, or maybe the October before that, um, but never got around to it. I'm going to try to get around to it sometime in October. Whether or not I actually end up doing that remains to be seen, but it, it's got a great premise. I just kind of wish that he had kept the old cover because it was magnificent. Then I got a couple more books from Scholastic. I got Have Sword Will Travel by Garth Nix and Sean Williams. This is about a boy and a girl who find a sword on a dried up riverbed. And the sword can talk and sort of sends them off on an epic adventure. I've not really heard anything about this, um, but it sounds fantastic. And I think this comes out in October, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to get to it as soon as I can, because this one sounds pretty epic and amazing. 
Then they also sent me The Scarecrow Queen by Melinda Salisbury, and this is the third and final book in the Sin Eater's Daughter trilogy. And it's not hardcover. Um, I think this was originally set to be hardcover, but apparently there wasn't enough money in the budget for that or something, so they changed it to paperback. Which means I'm going to have to get this, well, not this entire series, just the first two books in paperback if I want a matching set. Which really sucks. I really should close that window. Anyway, uh, I don't know too much about this third book since I haven't read the second one. But the first book is about a young girl named Twilla who her touch is deadly. She's the, the embodiment of this like death goddess. And the only people she can safely touch are the prince and the king and queen. The royal family, essentially. And she's um, actually engaged to the crown prince, but she finds herself falling for this new guard. And I wasn't a huge fan of the first book, but I've heard that the series gets better, so hopefully by the time I get around to this book, I will like it more. Then I picked up Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. I've been meaning to get this book for a long time as well, and with the second book in this companion novel series coming out next month, I figured it's high time to get it and give it a try. I have it on my October TBR, which you will be seeing on Wednesday, but yeah, this book is absolutely stunning. Um, all I really know is it's about a girl who is colorless, and she lives in a world of vibrant color, and her father goes missing, and so she needs to go and search for him. And that's really all I know about this book, but I've heard it is a beautiful book. And so I'm hoping to really like it. There's something about this book that just screams fall to me. And when I want to read fall books, I read them in October. So I put this on my TBR. So hopefully I enjoy it. I'm assuming I will because all everybody else seems to love it. So. Next, I have the book that I got in my Owl Crate last month, and that is Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel, actually. Um, and it's a fantastic, amazing fantasy book about a young girl named Mina Minkoba, who is the hope bearer. She brings hope for her, uh, for the citizens of the Fallen Isles. But... One day she finds out a secret that she's not supposed to know and she wants to tell people and so she is locked up in a inescapable prison and needs to sort of find her own voice and figure out who she is and what she stands for and it's such an amazing book and she suffers from anxiety which I also suffer from anxiety not as crippling as hers mind you but yeah it uh, there are definitely some, some parallels and some things that I very much related to, and it was so good. But, yeah. Then, as I mentioned in a previous video, I was going to get the UK edition of Wonder Woman Warbringer, and this is another UK cover that the picture did not do it justice. And I don't know if the video will do it justice, but... Yeah, it's shiny and, like, it looks beaten up, but I, but it's meant to be there, and, ah, oh, it's so pretty. And I really hope that the copy of Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lu um, will have a cover to match this, because this is so, so beautiful. If you don't know what this book is about, it has nothing to do with the... Uh, DC Extended Universe movie. It j is just a Wonder Woman story that takes place before Diana of Themyscira becomes Wonder Woman. She saves a girl off the coast of Themyscira and she turns out to be the Warbringer, a direct descendant of Helen of Troy. And she is a very dangerous being. And that's really all I know about it. But it sounds amazing. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book, so hopefully I will enjoy it. Next, I received an arc of Aletheia by Megan Tennant from Cloud Kitten Publishing, and this takes place in a world where this dangerous outbreak of this virus called Lethe exists, and if you contract Lethe, all of your memories of your hopes, your dreams, people that you loved are gone. 
your memory is completely wiped and you become one of the depraved. And in this city called Iris, there exists a cure. And they're willing to cure you if you give up pretty much your entire freedom. And it is about a girl who is identified as 736. And she fights to save the people who, who like her, gave up their freedom for this cure from the society that strips them of their freedom just to not be infected with this virus and it's a hefty book it's like oh like over 500 pages it's heavy i thought this was a hardcover when i first got it but it's a nice floppy paperback and i'm excited to see how i'm going to enjoy this i will be reading this one in november unfortunately i couldn't squeeze it into october like i had hoped but yeah this cover is pretty too and i mean greek mythology references Next, I have two books from Harlequin Teen, The Sidekicks by Will Kostakis and The Gatekeepers by uh, Jen Lancaster. Both of these books have to deal with characters um, dying. I think this one commits suicide and gets his entire town to sort of reevaluate their lives and who they are. Whereas in this book, it's about three people, uh, the swimmer, the rebel, and the nerd, whose only connection is their shared best friend Isaac, and so when Isaac dies, it forces them to reevaluate who they are and who they are to each other as well. And both of these books come out in October. Um, this comes out October 10th, this comes out October 17th, and unfortunately I could not fit these into my October TBR, but I really want to read them so badly. Um, I've heard, I've read some of Jen Lancaster's nonfiction, which is hilarious, but this seems to take a darker, more serious tone. Um, I have not heard anything about Will Kostakis, but this book sounds heart-wrenching and very thought-provoking, and I'm thinking I might just have a month where I just read really just serious thought-provoking books because I'm kind of getting into that headspace lately that I want to read those types of books and there are quite a few books that I've sort of avoided because of their serious topics so hopefully I'll get around to these sometime soon definitely before the end of the year. Finally I have Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Moss. This is the sixth technically seventh if you count the Assassin's Blade uh, book in the Throne of Glass series, and this is a novel told completely from Kale's perspective. I have not read this book because I have not read Empire of Storms yet, um, but I plan on reading both Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn in November, so hopefully I'll get around to them then. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book specifically. I've heard a lot of people go into it feeling that they're going to hate it, but they come out loving it, and people that go in loving it and come out loving it even more than they thought. So hopefully I will fall into that group, especially since I've sort of been disenchanted by Throne of Glass books lately, uh, which is one of the reasons why I haven't read Empire of Storms yet. Okay, so before things fall, this is my September-ish book haul. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And as always, happy reading. Bye.